Hey everyone, Kathy with the Whitby Soap Company. There's been a lot of interest in uh, airbrushing I've noticed online recently, so I thought I'd kind of show you how I do it, the tools I use. Um, the airbrush I have is by Iwata. Uh, it's definitely on the higher price point. It's one of the more expensive ones, but as far as I'm concerned, worth every penny. I've been using this for years now with no issues. Let's just tuck that out of the way. Um, and the compressor I use, I mean, you can use your giant, big, huge, you know, commercial compressor. You can use the one used for your bath bomb um, press. But this is actually the NeoAir. It is the mini compressor that is made by Iwata. And uh, that's it there. By the way, no, I'm not paid by them or sponsored by them. I just happen to love them. It's so easy. This thing is tiny. I mean, look how small it is. And as you'll hear in a minute, it's fairly quiet as well. Certainly much quieter than the giant big compressors that I use for my bath bomb press. Uh, this one's covered in stains, don't mind it. Anyway, I just put it over here so I can show you. So let me just actually plug it back in and put it away. Now there's several different kinds of airbrush type you can get. I highly recommend a bottom feed. What that means is that these bottles here plug in they have what's known as a little uh, nipple that just gets put right in here try and get the ones that are metal not plastic i find over time the alcohols and everything that we're using will melt the plastic down i like these metal ones i've been using these same bottles for years you can get them in different sizes so for you know i started i think with these teeny little bottles but then moved on to much bigger bottles as you can see you know they come in different shapes and sizes um but bottom feed is the way to go you'll see the top feed ones have the tiny little cups that's not going to hold very much plus then you have to clean it out in between using when i want to clean it as you'll see i literally pull this out put the new one in spray go um it's that easy okay the general premise is moving your trigger here uh, so anyway let's get started um these are my unicorn horn bath bombs uh, they actually have coloured embeds on the inside, but they're a white bath bomb, so I can airbrush them. Uh, I use a little mini turntable. Uh, this is actually, you can pick up any kind of little mini turntable. This is from my soldering station from when I used to silversmith, so I'm just repurposing it. Uh, even even the mess is, is pretty. Uh, so that's on there. I've raised it up a little bit. These are just some old bath bomb press molds that I no longer use. Uh, and this, by the way, is not a fancy holder for an Iowata. It just happens to fit perfectly. It's another old bath bomb press that I mold that I don't use. So there you go. These are all my tools. Uh, I've got the colors I need all ready to go. This, by the way, is my regular lakes and dyes that I have put into 99% uh, rubbing alcohol. Um, play around with the amount you need. If you use too much, it's going to be really dark and intense. You'll kind of figure it out as to how much you want. Um, I've got red 27 for a gorgeous fuchsia color. Let me just give it a shake. Yeah, cover up all the holes. As you can see, it gets a bit messy. <laughs> I've got my blue. Blue, I always find I use less color in because it's just such a strong color anyway. And then I think this one is now, I used to use just a yellow five, but I think I've moved into Sunbeam Yellow from Serafina's Coastal Colors, which I think is so lovely. It's so pretty. Anyway, enough of me talking. Let's uh, start and uh, we'll go from there. I've moved my mini compressor behind me because this is a little noisy, but as you can see, nothing compared to um, if you're using one of the big compressors. Like how quiet's that? All right, so I like to just begin by just spraying so I can make sure it's nice and clean. And now you can see why that turntable is such a handy thing. It makes life really, really easy. And I actually will do the same color repeatedly before switching out colors. It saves wasting product. It saves time. Now, normally I would do, you know, a couple of dozen of these in one go, but I'll just do a few of them so you can kind of get an idea as to what I'm doing. By the way, this is just craft paper. Uh, I like to cover my surfaces, even though they're washable, it just makes cleanup that much easier. All right, so I'm going to switch out my color 
the yellow comes out, the pink comes in. Now I've already shaken it, so I'm good to go. I haven't had to do anything with this. I mean, I could, I could literally just get rid of the spare yellow that might still be in there. But I'm gonna do that right now, back on here. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? Most of my colors come from Serafina's. In fact, I'd say almost all of them come from Serafina's. I just love the quality. I love the price point. The customer service is excellent. Sarah is great. And they last for such a long time. That easy. Now, as these dry, the color will actually intensify significantly. So don't panic when you see the color that comes out, uh, unless it's super, super intense already and you maybe don't want it that intense because I find that the colors will certainly continue to grow. I like to overlap just a little bit so I can get that rainbow effect so we can kind of see a little bit of the oranges coming. Notice it's not perfect. I mean these are bath bombs. These are you know hand painted. These are creations. Um, this is not coming out of a big factory machine painted. So I'm okay if each one looks different and my customers know that they're never gonna get all of them identical. All right, so let's change that one out. See, it comes out just that quickly and easily. Spray, 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 get rid of that. The blue. Give it a little shake. off to the races. I tend to do a little bit less blue. As I mentioned, it gets very, very intense. And always go back over if you need to, but that's actually going to darken up and I don't want splatter. By the way, you'll notice I'm wearing my gloves always. We wear gloves for best practices. I typically wear a mask as well because I don't want to be inhaling all of these particulates. Um, you know, on a long-term basis. I don't have my mask on today because of course I'm chatting with you. But there you go. That simple, that easy. You can spray the bottom if you want. Whoops. I obviously didn't put that in well enough, did I? Let me just plug that in. Ah, I think that's only happened twice to me in the entire time I've been doing bath bombs with this. There we go. All right, now you know how easily it's done. When these typically are dry, but you could do it now too. You can't have a unicorn product without some glitter. I think I got these ones from Voyager um, or Windy Point. Uh, I'm in Canada, so my suppliers, I'm mentioning a Canadian suppliers. So I think they now have US websites too. And then just do a little little squirt so you can get a little bit of shimmer because you, you know again it's unicorns there you go all done easy peasy now go airbrush something all right bye